Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. But before we start with any announcements or protocol or housekeeping measures, we want to make sure that we start this meeting off with prayer. So if you would join me, uh, go to the Lord in prayer uh, to bless this evening. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to participate and engage in free and open government. We ask, Father God, that as uh, members of this community are out on the roads tonight that they would get home to their families safely in this weather. And Father God, we thank you for this weather. We ask that you would bless Douglas County. We pray, Father God, that you would lead, guide, and direct our efforts in this community so that the quality of life of our citizens would be a blessing to others. We may do this all to the glory and blessing of your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, I'd like to, uh, before we get started, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Uh, if you are a veteran, uh, would you please lift your hand so that we can recognize and thank you before we get started. Yep. And if you will turn with me now. And if you are able to stand, please join me as we pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, my name is Micah Gravely. I represent the 67th House District, which is West Douglas County and South Paulding County. And I'm very honored to serve in that position. And I want to thank you for allowing me to do so. I'm also very honored to be here tonight at the request of Commissioner Ann jones Guider to help moderate this meeting. Uh, we want it to go smoothly. We want to ensure that your questions are answered. We also want to ensure that you get the information you came out for in this type of weather that you're able to leave with some of those answers. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure, number one, uh, please cut your cell phones off if you will. Um, I just laid mine down, cut it off, and we've also got a sheet of kind of how tonight's going to go, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I'm going to read through some of this because we want to ensure, ladies and gentlemen, this is y'all's time. And we want to make sure that questions get answered. We want to make sure that if somebody didn't hear something, we've got enough time to repeat it. We also want to make sure that once something is answered, if that spurs another question, you may want to write something in response to the way something was answered. And we want to make sure that you've got time to answer or to get those questions answered. Um, but before we do that, I do want to recognize uh, Douglas City Councilman Richard Siegel is here with us tonight. Uh, also. Uh, Commissioner Ann jones Guider, Commissioner Mike Mulcair, and they're going to introduce uh, the county staff. Uh, but we also want to say thank you to our Douglas County Sheriff's Office personnel, to our law enforcement. Thank you so much for what you do for us on a daily basis, and thank you for taking time to be here tonight as well. It means a lot. Okay, we're going to get started. Um, First and foremost, uh, as we go down our sheet that was passed out, and if you don't have one, uh, please, I, okay, just I have one, so I'm going to read what I have to you all. Uh, it says, all commissioners have been invited. Uh, Director Gary Watson is right here to my left. Your right uh, is available if necessary to explain the current proposal. Questions about the new proposed system and routes will be submitted in written form from the audience all during the meeting. In case you have a question about an answer, please raise your hand and someone will get you a pen and paper to write a question that may have been spurred by one of the answers. Each response will be limited to two minutes, no more than five minutes, correctly? There will be no rehashing of past events, attacks on either side directed at the commissioners, staff, or attendees will not be allowed. Please let's keep our applause to a minimum, no applause, cheering or shouting so that we can hear the questions being asked and so that those being asked the questions can answer appropriately 
and correctly. Please be respectful to everyone. And remember this, we're all neighbors. We all go to church in this community. Our kids go to school in this community. We work in this community. Let's act like Christians and let's let the Lord be praised and blessed tonight as we said in our prayer. And let's be neighborly. We can disagree and still be respectful. Uh, handouts of the original plan uh, are, are distributed or I think are on the back there. If someone needs to get an original plan, they are available for us tonight. Maps and handouts will be distributed on what the current proposed system is. And as you can see, there's four maps uh, back here. If you have a question about the maps, Commissioner uh, Guider and Commissioner Mulcair will direct you on any questions that you may have about the, the maps, as well as uh, Gary and Miguel. Okay, it must be noted, um, and this is an important fact, this is an important aspect of tonight. It must be noted that some of the four routes highlighted at the recent town hall meetings conducted around the county have changed. Okay? The new proposal was brought to the Board of Commissioners this past Monday. We're talking about yesterday, or Monday week. So it's, it's just a week old. And finally, just, just last, yesterday, a week ago. Okay, and we will attempt to answer all questions and as many questions as time allows. Uh, the meeting will go no later than 8 p.m. I will not be answering any questions that I'm going to be moderating tonight. Um, I've already gotten wet, so if anything's thrown, just make sure it's a sponge or something soft. Uh, and I'll, I'll be able to take it. Uh, and again, questions will be submitted throughout the evening. So if you have one, we'll be Dr. Ms. Kim Ravenscraft is down here. She is going through the questions. Uh, she is not removing any questions. She's simply putting those that are similar in nature together so that we can read those simultaneously. But I want to make sure everyone knows no question that's been submitted is going to be removed. Okay, we're going to try to get through as many as possible. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Ann Jones-Guider. This is, this is fantastic to have this big of a turnout uh, in this kind of weather. But um, maybe the Lord will stop the rain so we don't uh, have any more of the bad weather. But I do want to thank uh, uh, the staff, um, Gary Watson, Director Gary Watson, and uh, Miguel Valentin, he is our DOT director, for being here. And uh, Miss Tiffany Stewart Stanley, <laughs> she's got one of those hyphenated names like I do. So <laughs> she is uh, uh, here. She's a uh, staff up there in the Board of Commissioners office. Anybody else? Did I miss anybody? But. Um, I hope we get as many questions that you uh, you have on your mind about this. It's been very, very, very confusing, and so we're going to tr uh, try to do it in a simplistic way, and we're going to try to make our ans answers short and concise so we don't confuse you even more. Thank you. So we're going to get started with the first round of questions, and you said it was on disabilities, okay? Uh, so the first question is, what would the advantages be for a dial-a-ride system over what is being proposed now? And I'll read that question again. What would be the advantages, what would the advantages be for a dial-a-ride system over what is being proposed now? A dollar ride system, which is also called demand response, would basically serve uh, the entire county if that's what the Board of Commissioners chose to do. Uh, with our fixed route bus system, it, it serves specific areas and doesn't go into the entire county. Now, with the fixed route bus system, there is a required ADA component, and so 
individuals with disabilities or seniors who live within three quarters of anywhere on the route would be able to, to be certified um, for the ADA service. And that service would be door-to-door -door pickup from, for them and would be able to carry them to a bus stop or to any location within the zone uh, of the, uh, around the routes. So that's, that's the main difference. Dial ride would probably serve the whole county and be door to door, fixed route, serve specific, specific locations and has a, a limited uh, ADA response. Now I'm going to kind of give an, an opposing or uh, another side of the dial ride, if you will permit me. I hope all of y'all picked up one of these sheets. It's got the highlights and everything. Um, in 2015, the Board of Commissioners did approve to start at the low, smaller recommendations from the transportation study. This is a list of, I think, Gary, you, you produced this, did, did you not? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but this uh, came out of um, the multi-model division but down if you look at number five it says um, down at the bottom realistic projects for 2017 would be planning for flex zone bus service and dial a ride demand response it was in the original plan as it is I, well I think it may be in this plan too but it was in the original plan that the Board of Commissioners passed that in Incorporated the two routes. And uh, Commissioner Mulcair, if you want to add anything. Uh, no, just my recollection is that it, it, the, two, the two, I think I'm projecting loud enough by the time they get to the microphone. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was being taped. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily remember a, a dial ride being incorporated in, in the, the grant, the, the uh, two route grant that was originally submitted to ARC. This this was the nope. recommendations from the study. The recommendations, okay, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's accurate. That's accurate, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the two routes, so okay. Okay. Okay, okay next question. As an elderly non-driver off of Highway 5, please walk me through the process to actually get a ride and go to a doctor's appointment. Well, depending on how far down you live on Highway 5, the fixed route bus system won't be able to serve you. Now, if you, if you are a disabled individual or a senior, we do have a voucher program uh, that we have that, that serves those segments of our community. Unfortunately, the funds for that program are, are limited and we're not able to serve near as many people uh, as we hope, would like to right now. We hope to expand that, that program, but, but that uh, expanding the voucher program is, is our best option right now. And as I mentioned in the commission meeting uh, last week, uh, it's my desire for my next big project to be to start on the dollar ride pro program for the in entire county. Uh, if we're given the go ahead to start on the fixed route bus service, uh, hopefully we get that started the first quarter uh, of next year. And then immediately after that, I would like to start working on implementing the, the, the dollar ride demand response program and hopefully have that in place and ready to go sometime early in 2020. The bus, <clears throat> the bus routes down Highway 5, I think they go to those apartments uh, right at um, Stewart Parkway. That's as far down as they go. Um, Gary mentioned that the dollar ride might be available in uh, next year. Um, this is a massive undertaking with four routes, and I doubt, I'm taking the opposing side, okay? <laughs> uh, 
I don't see I don't see how in the world they can kick off four routes and have the dollar ride in place all at one time. Uh, if you'll notice on here, the dollar ride would have been implemented in 2017 if we'd stuck to the original plan. So um, it's my thinking is we'd be driving the riding the vans by now if we'd stuck to the original plan. I'll go ahead and state the obvious, but when you have a fixed route system, the recovery of operating costs is largely dependent on, or partially dependent on, ridership. So the more you get away from population densities, your costs go up and your ridership goes down. Uh, so that's an economic reality. Would you disagree with that? Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, good. Uh, so that's why fixed route systems um, can't go everywhere or the, or the price continues to go up to op operate them. So. Okay, this question. Many areas of Douglas County could benefit from a transportation system but are not targeted in the current plan. For example, Corn Crib and Sanctuary Village will not have any access to the current transit plan. What steps are being made to address these high need areas? Well, there's sort of two parts to that. Number one is that we would hope that the fixed route service would be so successful that we would be able to look at additional routes for it as we move forward. And, and the second part of that answer is to initiate the dial-a-ride program uh, like we, we mentioned. And I, I, I do want to, to say that the, when we did the study, and this is all I'm gonna say about the study, is that the first two recommendations for the, uh, in the study was fixed route service was number one, dial-a-ride service was number two. And so that, that's the, uh, it, the, the manner in which we've gone about trying to implement transportation and mobility improvements. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I learned about the new routes this past Monday, not yesterday, but uh, past Monday. No one gave me a call. No, no one told me that ARC said that we could change the routes. I had asked in two uh, open meetings where we locked into those two routes and I was told yes. No one gave me a call to tell me otherwise, whether staff or commissioners or whoever, nobody. So this was a very big surprise for me. Uh, but somebody was talking to somebody else because one district got a whole new route. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> And if, if while uh, the questions are being answered, uh, if you have if that spurs another question, remember, uh, Mr. Sparks has a basket, and if just raise your hand, he'll bring you a pen and paper on that. How is the current four routes proposed going to actually help elderly and handicapped citizens? Well, it will certainly help elderly and handicapped citizens who are on the route or within three quarters uh, of a mile of, of anywhere on, on the route. Uh, they can either get to a bus, a bus stop and get on, on the uh, bus, or again, we go back to the ADA component that is door to door for elderly and disabled who, who qualify within the, the zone of the fixed route bus service. Um, it would be basically be income driven. Okay. 
Okay, this question, where is the money coming from for the maintenance of this system? How much will it cost per year? Maintenance soar, uh, costs would be absorbed by the county and the amount that we're budgeting or proposing uh, for the first year of service in 2019 for maintenance uh, is right at $37,000. As Gary said, there's a, a six something million um, grant. This is what the vote is gonna be about. And it's gonna be for three years uh, if there's any shortfall in ridership, it will fall, it will come out of the general fund, uh, what we operate the county with. If at the end of the three years, and it's still going on, it will come out of the general fund. Now my contention is, we have Greta buses out here, we have about 11 routes that go to Atlanta. It's during the peak hours of the day for workers, but because it is directed toward the workers, and they leave out of um, the park and ride across the street from Home Depot, right out there, Douglas Boulevard. Uh, we have van pools, we have 40 van pools that go to all areas uh, of the metro area, and they, I learned today, one goes to Talladega, Alabama, <laughs> and to Anniston, and, um, the ridership is down on, on both of those programs tremendously. At um, the revenues for both of those programs is down over about 45% since 2014. So that is, uh, that's worry, that worries me because if it's not gonna help pay for itself, even more money will come out of the general fund. Okay, this question reads, a, feas a feasibility study is used to determine the viability of an idea, such as ensuring a project is legally and technically feasible, as well as economically justifiable. It tells us whether a project is worth the investment. In some cases, a project may not be doable. In the spirit of getting this transportation system right, we must do a feasibility study. Will you commit to a proper feasibility study? If the vote passes next week to accept the grant, it's too late. Um, however, in the transportation study back in 2015, they did give us estimated costs of levels of service that we could implement. And that's why the resolution uh, picked the smaller uh, recommendations. But the smaller recommendations is um, less than 500,000 capital and less than 100,000 per year um, for the uh, maintenance, the, the fuel and stuff like that. But um, with Kinetics, who is a, um, a consultant that was hired through the Transportation Committee, has already said that this four bus system or van system <laughs> will cost $2 million a year. I'm not gonna get up every time and just say ditto. Uh, okay, and if I disagree, I certainly uh, certainly we'll get up. Um, I do think, uh, across the, the broader perspective of, of discussions and how this whole process has uh, uh, unwound uh, and revealed itself, uh, I do think in the future, uh, because Ann's right, the vote is next, uh, is next Tuesday. Uh, if it passes, it's done. If it doesn't pass it, then we can, then we can go back to the, the drawing board. Uh, but, uh, 
the the fact that I don't think the the full commission had engagement uh, with a lot of the processes as, as we reached uh, decisions and I would like to see more of that in the future thus you know the commission could have asked for a feasibility study or or, or additional da data uh, as opposed to basically having the consultant um, work for the DOT department no crit no criticism at all of, of our DOT uh, but I think there was a, a tendency to disconnect the, the full commission from a lot of the thought process and decisions that went on. There is a discrepancy between the city and the county regarding support for this system. What measures are being taken to resolve this issue and to include the city on the transportation plans. The first step was about two weeks ago, uh, Madam Chair and I met with the mayor of Douglasville and we had a, what I felt was a real productive talk that we cleared the air on some things. And as we move forward, if the vote is positive next week, I can assure you that we will be having conversations with the city to make sure that everybody's on the same page with this. Gary, I'm gonna call on you to elaborate a little bit because it sounded like we hadn't talked to the city until a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but the reality is, um, first of all, I think we could have done better, what, whatever we did. But what we did was proper and correct, and that is our staff work with city staff. Is that correct? Uh, now you could say the chairman should have reached out to the mayor earlier or whatever, but the proper operational uh, and planning uh, uh, protocols were followed with our DOT staff talking with city DOT staff. Now once it was thrown over the wall, the county can't be responsible for what happens after, after that point. So I say there was room for improvement, uh, but we did the proper thing up to that point. Back in May of 2017, uh, the city, um, I think they were just given notice at that time to sign off on the uh, CMAC grant. Um, and we got this uh, email from them saying that they were not able to do so because their council was not that informed and did not know what was going on and they they were concerned about the um, uh, where this uh, system was going to go and the cost uh, the cleanup for the area for the bus stops and that so forth because most of the stops of the first two initial routes were in the city and uh, we should have, uh, uh, and, and I remember at, uh, in, when we first passed the resolution that the chairman at that time did say, now we've got to get with the city now and uh, Mayor Robinson and, and, and work with them on this. Somebody, and I don't know how it, the ball was dropped. We should have gotten with them. Why can't the citizens vote on whether or not to have the buses instead of leaving it up to the commissioners or to others? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this because um, we started talking about the transportation study back in 2015, the early part of 2015, and we had that study and it was presented to us in the early part of 2016, I think. Um, so um, nobody came to the meetings. They weren't upset about what was happening because we, 95% of our conversation, and I reviewed all the minutes, and I'll be glad to share them with you one-on-one -on -one if you want me to, was about the seniors and the disabled. If you look on this sheet of paper that has all the highlights at the top, says target population, 
You notice it's not in alphabetical order across there. It says seniors, disability, commuters, students, and, and others across that. That was the priority of what, that was our objective to uh, implementing this system. A lot of people think because I'm opposing the, propo the new system that I'm against the vans. I'm not. I was on board from the beginning because we were talking about uh, a pinup, a pinup population that could not do for themselves. I'm going to personally elaborate just on, on uh, Commissioner uh, Guider's last comment. Uh, yes, I think the focus was largely on um, disabled and elderly, but that never excluded everybody else. Uh, you can't ask for a handicap badge and say you can't get on the bus unless you have one. So the system would be available uh, to everybody. Uh, the issue of voting uh, on the bus system Largely, from my uh, perception, recollection, and observation, I'm sorry to be so wordy, uh, is that that arose when the uh, ATL uh, legislation passed to the General Assembly and they started talking about uh, public referendum on uh, transportation splos and so forth. That's when that, that issue really raised its head. The county held eight meetings about transportation planning. Is that, is that a good number? I think it's eight or, eight or nine meetings, public outreach. And of those people who, of that audience or attendees, 14% said they did not want and would not use the system. So that's how, that's how the proposal progressed to the two routes that was approved by the board uh, unanimously. Uh, and so that's my, that's my observation about uh, voting on it. I have no problem with, uh, you know, in general with the idea of uh, population voting on it. Uh, but in this particular case, there was a lot of opportunity for public uh, input, a lot of advertising, and a lot of follow-up, a lot of study, and 14% uh, of, the, of the attendees voiced. And that, uh, did that also include internet or just, uh, okay, it didn't include, there was some internet input as well. Uh, but from the public input, there, about four, there were 14% who opposed the, the bus system. How will operation of a bus system during school traffic, 7.15 to 8.15 a.m. and 3 to 4.30 p.m. affect traffic on an already congested roads? Well, first and foremost, when, if we implement the bus service, our, our main focus is going to be on safety. And we will, we will try our best to um, time the routes to where they, they will miss school traffic as much as they possibly can and, and be out of areas around the schools when schools are letting out and, and, and taking up in the morning as much as we poss possibly can. We won't be able to do that completely because the buses will be on on a, on a schedule, but, but we will take into consideration sensitive areas such as schools as, as we start uh, finalizing the routes and the, our time schedules. The, it does concern me, uh, especially during school set, um, session and when the school buses, when they're out on the road too, there's one uh, intersection from Stewart Middle School over 92. And we all know that that intersection right there at the railroad tracks, uh, 92 and 78, backs up. I don't care whether it's Sunday or Monday or whenever. And when you, uh, there's going to be a route that goes across that intersection, I think it's going to throw the, the uh, schedule way off. And it's going to just, uh, I think that's one of the routes that was put on. Um, it was taken off, and then it was put back on just recently. Uh, 
everybody remember the question? Practically, I don't. Uh, practically speaking, I don't. I don't know. Theoretically, is you're taking vehicles off the road. So if a bus is, has got ten people on there, maybe that's five or six cars that are off, that are off the road. Now we don't know what route you're going to take. So that, go back to my original answer. Factually, we don't know. This question reads, how can we afford a bus system? Question mark. The Board of Commissioners stated in the Douglas County Sentinel that they were going to raise the millage rate as it is, even without the bus system. Can we really afford this without raising taxes on homeowners? Board of Commissioners has not decided on the millage rate at all. I think you may be thinking the city, the city of Douglasville, is not going to roll their millage rate back. I think they're raising, they have a uh, tax increase this year. So that, how, so the question was, how can we afford it? I, I think that's the big question. Uh, I think we could have afforded the original plan of the two routes because it uh, would have cost about $500,000 to run each year. Well, now it's, it's up to $2 million. So uh, with all the things that's going to be coming online, in the splash, we're going to build a, a fire station down on Douglas Hill Road, a new fire station that's got to be uh, manned. 24-7. Uh, uh, we've got a new senior complex going up in Lithia Springs. That's got to be manned and then we and ma maintain electrical, water, all that stuff. And then we've also got a new youth center going up at Boundary Waters that's going to have to have more uh, staff. And I do think it's, it's pretty clear that we're going to have to add more staff. The more routes, the more staff. Thank you. Just one point of clarification in terms of the bus system operation. Uh, we, the commissioners, uh, I, th I think unanimously, I think, um, never uh, supported the idea that the bus operation would be would be staffed by county employees. It was always going to be contracted out to a to a third party. Uh, but largely, I I understand and agree with what uh, Commissioner Geider is saying. Okay, this question reads. Transportation has been said to play a major part in economic development. Fox Hall hopes to be a big part of Douglas County's growth. Is transportation to the resort being considered to better assist workers to get to the jobs that they, that they have there? No. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> okay, and the questions are coming in, so we're we've uh, we're not categorizing them anymore. We're just taking them as we get them. Uh, why was the Campbellton Street route added back into the scope after being removed when residents voiced their opposition to having bus stops in their front yards? Can this route be removed once and for all? I'm going to beat Gary to the punch here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I had a meeting in Atlanta, and uh, either before the fact or after the fact, I was not informed about it. Uh, I was told by our county administrator after the meeting that it had been added back in. So I don't, I don't know why it was added back in. Perhaps Gary knows It is my understanding that the mayor asked that it be removed. It was in the original plan. It was removed, but that on, I think, on the 19th of June, 
the transportation committee put it back in. Uh, I think because the district commissioner asked for it to be put back in. What is the plan to handle traffic flow on the two lane streets shown on the proposed routes? Considering the traffic problems the city and the county already are dealing with. I don't think that traffic flow <clears throat> would be in our purview on that. That would be up to the to the city or the county or wh whoever has administration over their those streets and also uh, law enforcement. Our responsibility in that area will, will be to operate the buses as uh, safely and as efficiently as we can. I think there are plans to uh, buy some right-of-ways so the buses can pull off a little bit, isn't there? And then uh, there's going to be, um, <clears throat> what do you call where the people sit while they're waiting on the bus? Uh, huh? Shelters, bus sh shelters, okay. But uh, the narrow streets that we have here in Douglasville, it would be very difficult unless somebody wants us to cut into their front yard. <laughs> But um, I guess it's going to depend on the time of day, m mostly, and uh, how much, or if it's whether it's on a, a weekend, more traffic going to the mall. I'm going to go up about 30,000 feet. <laughs> and so I'm not talking about this bus system. But why is so, traffic so bad? It's every place I've been, and Douglas County is by far uh, way down a list of some of the places I've been in terms of really, really bad traffic. And the fact is we have more people, and we've got more cars on the road, and commercial vehicles, and everything else that goes along with it. Whew. How do you fix that? Well, you reduce the number of cars, you reduce the number of people on the road driving cars. And how do you do that? You provide some means of alternative transportation. Is it walking trails, which would be appropriate in some scenarios, very limited scenarios, uh, or bike trails to be able to go to the store and get a loaf of bread and a quart of milk or whatever, remove vehicles from the road. But at the end of the day, as population densities continue to mushroom, you have to have some type of mass transit. And mass transit, I may be gone. All of us may be gone. Uh, but mass transit is going to come to Douglas County. And it's going to come to the regional, the whole region of Douglas, of uh, Atlanta Metro. Again, I'm not talking about this, I'm not promoting or talking about this specific bus system. But something has to be done, and it's not buying more cars and paving more roads. We'll never catch up. I see that the buses, vans, only run until 8 p.m. and not at all on Sunday. This schedule isn't conducive to many retail and restaurant employees. What considerations will be taken on this matter so as to better serve the citizens? Well, certainly that's something that we'll be looking at all, all the time uh, as we move along and, and we see where our ridership is coming from, where people are getting on the buses and getting off the buses, uh, what times uh, they're utilizing the buses. We'll, we'll make adjustments. Uh, I hope we're so successful that we need to run more hours in a day. I hope we're mo so successful that, that we have to run on Sundays. Uh, that would be great, but that's just something that we'll have to keep our eye on, uh, and we will closely follow that. At the bottom of this sheet, 
it says that uh, as projects come online, the county uh, develops data on uh, important components such as ridership and cost. That's why I think it's very important to have a pilot program as we talked about uh, in the beginning. You, get, you start out small and you work up as you collect the data, as you get the ridership. Uh, it's just like I, I used the uh, scenario the other day when you get out of college, you don't go and buy a million dollar house. You start out small, you build up. You, uh, you see whether or not you can afford it, you build up. And that's the way I've always done in my life and I think uh, it's worked out pretty good for me. <laughs> Thank you. Agree. Uh, I'm not a big conspiracy uh, aficionado, but uh, uh, it, it makes you wonder uh, if a, a bus system is worth having, why it's not worth having seven days a week. And certainly, other places I've been, Saturdays and Sundays, they may have a different schedule than they have Monday through Friday. Uh, but the idea that we could just not operate at all on a Sunday um, makes me wonder uh, if that was a way to uh, recalibrate or calculate the uh, operating cost uh, downward. Uh, so I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Just a thought. Is it possible to table the grant vote until 6 p.m. until a 6 p.m. meeting can be scheduled where the public has better opportunity to attend. I want to read that one again. Is it possible to table the grant vote until a 6 p.m. meeting can be scheduled where the public has better opportunity to attend? I would say anything is possible uh, if, you, if the public uh, demanded it of their commissioners. Um, it was originally going to be voted at a 6 p.m. meeting, and it uh, got changed just pa uh, this past Tuesday. So um, the purpose of this meeting is to just, you know, get the facts out there, get the pros and the cons about the whole system. It's being filmed back here. It will be aired. Uh, it's being filmed by uh, two groups. So uh, hopefully we can get the word out there. And if the public wants it to be postponed, they need to contact their district commissioner and the chairman. Thank you. Just to elaborate with a little more detail, uh, yes, the vote was going to be uh, in an evening meeting, uh, the first commission, me uh, yeah, first commission meeting of this month. Uh, and then when it turned out that there was a, uh, a, cha a change in plans, which uh, uh, no one, none of us had, had seen except for one commissioner, uh, then it was tabled and, and to the next meeting. So the next meeting happened to be uh, a morning meeting. Uh, but I have no problems with, uh, with uh, evening meetings. I've been a proponent uh, of that. I tried it my first year in, in, uh, in office and nobody came, so I didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I was just informed that uh, City Councilman Mark Adams had just walked in. Thank you for being here, sir. Okay, this question reads, a direct route to MARTA was removed due to citizen response to the collaborative firm's study indicating that the route was of low priority. Review of the study indicates that all of the routes received low priority. Would this not indicate that the plan needs heavy review? What is in place to stop the Transportation Committee from adding this route back into the plan after we vote?
the uh, public input was helpful, uh, but clearly we were stuffing the ballot box uh, by the people who are engaged in opposition to uh, the bus route in general and specifically the, uh, the martyr route. Uh, a couple of days after that uh, proposal was vetted and sent forward by the Transportation Committee, which is a whole nother, a whole nother issue, uh, I voiced my opposition and told uh, Commissioner Robinson that I would not vote to support a route that went outside the city. That's a regional uh, responsibility. This is no secret. I told the chairman the same thing. Uh, that's a regional route. That's a Georgia and Georgia State and, and regional operation. Uh, not incumbent on the on the county and the county taxpayers to support. Uh, so I think the adjustment to the route system was perhaps to garner a vote uh, among the among the commissioners. Uh, and um, but certainly the public output was helpful in supporting that position. I was uh, against the direct route from the very beginning because we always were talking for all, since 2015 till uh, this year, we were always talking about inside Douglas County. It was two looping routes inside Douglas County. Now the new routes, I'll let Gary elaborate on that because they do touch with Cobb Link that goes to Martyr. Um, ATL, this ATL is a renaming of Martyr. Uh, it was a bill that was passed in the legislature and um, there's a lot of counties that, like Gwinnett, I think Gwinnett passed, uh, you know, that they, they're gonna have a vote. Um, don't know what, I tried to find out what Cobb County was gonna do, but um, they have it uh, we just couldn't get in touch with the right people and everything. But I do know when they were going through their budget process that the first things they were going to cut were, ca uh, were routes because they, nobody was riding them. And they've, got, they've had a system over there for uh, a long time. So, But I was always against the direct route. Anytime you wedge yourself with somebody else, you're going <laughs> to get the good and the bad. And um, crime is a, is a problem. Um, I, people, people have said, well, what do you expect them to do? Come out here, steal a TV, and get on the bus and ride back? No, but I do expect drugs and uh, things like that to be coming out here. If I may uh, take the opportunity, uh, you mentioned uh, the, I'm sorry, I'm Miguel Valentin, the Director of Transportation for the County. Uh, the new ATL, there's a lot to be defined on it, but it stands for Atlanta uh, Transit Link. And the term is intended to connote a system that is potentially in different counties but it's linked together so that there's connectivity between the two. The way the legislation was crafted, MARTA, because they operate the rail, will still continue to operate rail in the counties where it operates. Uh, but there is no rail in, in Douglas County and uh, perhaps in the future, uh, there could be uh, extensions to Cobb and uh, Douglas. But the main thrust of ATL is to make sure that different systems in different counties and municipalities are able to link together so that people can get around throughout the entire region. If the bus system is third party, what oversight will be in place and who will it go through? I'll read that again. If the bus system is third party, I'm assuming is managed by a third party, what oversight will be in place and who will it go through? It's our proposal <clears throat> 
to add a, a new staff person in the multimodal department that, who would be called transit services manager. And their day-to-day -day responsibility would be oversight of the third party operator. Now, to continue the oversight, um, I, I would be uh, the transit supervisor's um, main uh, supervisor. I would have oversight over them. And then, of course, that, that chain would continue up through the Department of Transportation. And obviously, the Board of Commissioners would have ultimate oversight over the third party provider. Is the bus system already a definite? Meaning, is it going to happen regardless? And is it going to be connected to MARTA? It is not definite as of tonight. Once the vote is, is uh, if once we have the vote to either to accept the CMAC grant, then it is definite. Uh, the routes that are proposed right now touch Cobb Link and they go to Martyr. Is that right? And you can elaborate if you want to. And uh, <clears throat> I've had multiple questions. What I'm doing is trying to put the same questions together up there. Multiple questions regarding the original two route proposed system and why it went to a four route system. So I'm trying to put those together. Uh, it says, why did the cost go from 500,000 to 2 million per year when this went to a four route system? followed up with the question that's corresponding, how do we stop this four route system and go back to the two route system? We applied for the CMAC grant for the two, with the two routes. Um, we were told uh, after the fact that a, um, ARC came back and said it did not fit uh, the criteria for that type grant. Um, so they suggested adding additional routes. Um, if we go back to the two route um, uh, system, pressure would have to be put on the commissioners to do so. But right now that's not on the table unless um, people ask their commissioners to uh, do it. <laughs> Talking about the two route system as we uh, initially approved it, forwarded it to the ARC, it was, uh, my recollection, it was $8 million and uh, it was two routes. Uh, the uh, information came back that, as, as Commissioner Guider said, that it did not meet the ARC's uh, criteria. They're looking at regional solutions, regional, uh, and not something that's so um, uh, provincial that would, you know, would stay within, within Douglas County. So. I can understand that reasoning, but it, when it went from two routes to four routes, the money amount dropped um, to uh, is it six million or six and a half million, six million. So it uh, uh, it dropped from eight million to six million, and the mileage almost doubled. The mileage is funded by the grant, uh, so that should give anybody pause about the the fiscal uh, soundness of the program. I, I'm like. Uh, 
Commissioner Guider, you know, two routes and $8 million over three years. Uh, and the ability to uh, to start small, start you know baby steps, learn learn systems, and and expand from that point, you know at eight million dollars over three years, that sounds like a pretty good pretty good deal. Uh, but uh, the four routes, almost tw almost twice as many miles, uh, at uh, at six million dollars has to give you some pause. Second thought, <laughs> I'm not going to say the two routes is off the table until the fat lady sings, and I haven't sang, <laughs> sang yet. Uh, it's not over. Uh, anything should be on the table, uh, but it's up to the citizens. Okay, we've got another one that's questions are similar, so we'll read them into one. <clears throat> what demographics are being considered when determining these bus routes? And what priority? <clears throat> this was originally marketed for elderly assistance. What has changed? <clears throat> Corresponding question, how many handicapped or disabled are within three-fourths of a mile from the route limit. Is an elderly person who lives three-fourths of a mile expected to walk to a bus stop? And the questions are right here. If you want to read. That would be the purpose of the dollar ride. Uh, over in Carroll County, they have implemented a dollar ride uh, system. They, they've got, I think they said they had six buses, and you make an appointment to be picked up at your door um, 24 hours ahead of time, and then you can either get a round trip ticket or for, uh, for $6 or a one way ticket for $3. three dollars. Um, I was told the other day, just recently, that the buses were full. That the vans, they're really vans, just like what we got. But they're, they're full because they're addressing people that don't normally drive. A lot of elderly people do not drive outside their neighborhood. They may go to a grocery store, but then they go home. Um, this um, new system, it doesn't even address the western side of the county. I, uh, out at Mirror Lake, you know, Mirror Lake's in my district. Uh, it's in Douglas County, but it's in my, and it's in my district. But right across the street from Mirror Lake on Connors Road is a huge um, senior citizens complex. This isn't going to help them. This is not going to help people. One lady came to the meeting the other day and said she attends a new mountaintop church in Winston. It's not going to get her to that church. Um, there were most of the people that came up and spoke at our uh, public speaking uh, before the meeting the other day. The original two route system would have addressed every one of their requests. They most of the request was about seniors and the disabled, and that was on that was the. Uh, like I say, 95% of the conversation in our discussions was about that population. And, um, but the dial ride is the only thing that's going to truly address the issue about being picked up at the door. I need to correct myself uh, from my, my previous remark. Uh, I, I said that the miles actually uh, uh, doubled. Uh, if I'm any good at math, uh, the original two route systems were 35.4 miles, and the uh, amended CMAC grant, the one that's active right now with, with the uh, uh, Holmes Marta Station uh, terminus, is uh, 94.6 miles. Uh, so that's a little short of. Uh, uh, three times uh, at uh, $2 million less money. 
so that's that's where the my the fiscal concern comes from. When the proposed amended, or is it the amended proposed? I'm I'm getting myself confused. Uh, it came up in the last uh, last commission meeting uh, where the direct contact with Holmes Mars Station was was removed. I mean that was a, that was a step in in the right direction, uh, but the problem is. Uh, those those uh, mileages were just allocated to other routes, so it ended up being just about the same number of miles. Uh, and I was looking for a commensurate reduction in the total number of miles with the removal of the Holmes uh, Martyr route, and that did not happen. So, thank you for bearing with me. But the miles were only made up in one district. And that's, that's my contention about this, uh, the system is not addressing uh, the entire county and the needs, especially for the seniors and the disabled. It's not addressing all. You know, uh, we're supposed to pass laws and pa uh, start programs that are for the common good of the people. This is not common good, it's just a select area mostly the west, uh, the eastern side of the county, and and uh, here, right here in Douglasville. The southern part, you know, it, it doesn't affect you, except you're gonna have to pay for it. And then the western side, it doesn't affect you, but you're gonna have to pay for it. And that's the, that's the whole problem. It just doesn't reach out to the main people we were talking about at the time. As you can see on this sheet, Seniors and disabled people, it's not in alphabetical order going across that, it's in priority order. Thank you. I understand the buses will be paid for by a grant. Once the grant runs out, how will they be paid for? Well, the good thing is we have a, a continuing stream of grant money from the Federal Transit Administration. Um, we, we will continue to have money available for capital projects such as, as vehicle purchases, construction of facilities, things like that. What we don't have a continuing supply of grant money for is, is operating assistance but we won't have any issue in finding the money moving forward to purchase additional vehicles. Has our transportation committee or board of commissioners put any consideration into failing ridership or falling ridership for area bus systems? For example, Cobb, DeCab, Cobb and DeCab transits is this project ever had a feasibility study actually completed? No, no. <laughs> but um, a lot of the transit systems, uh, the ridership is down. Uh, like I said, when Cobb County was uh, 50 million in the red with their budget, by the way, they did have to go up on their taxes this year. <laughs> um, but they were 50 million in the red, and the first thing they wanted to cut was the uh, some of the routes that were not helping to pay for themselves. It never will break even, but the hope is, is it 25 percent? Yeah, that they, that they bring in revenue of about 25 percent to help offset some of the costs. And uh, it says, what roads will buses run on and during what times? And am I correct in saying that these maps back here are the proposed routes? Plus you have handouts. Plus you have handouts. Okay, I brought another question just in case. Is it correct that bus stops will not be needed if we were to choose a dial-a-ride system? Yes. 
Yes, that's, that's correct. Dial a ride is door-to-door -door service. Um, could you elaborate that on that a little bit? Is it possible to go to a dial, dial a ride system uh, with, under this grant? Uh, let me let me just say about Carroll County. Carroll County is considered a, a, a rural county. We are considered an ur, uh, urban urban county, so we can't get the same grant. Or they didn't get a grant. But it's costing them $35,000 a year for their system. But we can't get, um, we don't qualify for that. I, I don't understand. We're not rural, so we can't implement a system like that. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> not with this grant. But we could turn this grant down and start off in a different direction? Yes, okay, thank you. How do you justify spending general fund monies on buses when the transportation services that we have now are underutilized? Our parks and roads are in bad shape. Can we fix them first? We have an ongoing splash that is directed toward the parks and for the roads. We spend uh, like 2.4 million a year uh, on roads. Um, and surely y'all have seen some of the roads being paved. <laughs> Uh, and dug in uh, po off of Post Road, we're actually getting a new bridge out there, but that's being paid by the uh, federal government, state government, okay, state government. But uh, we have this splash going on to pay for roads right now, and um, each district gets allocated 25%, although in District 4, we have more roads uh, a longer road uh, than any other district, but we get the same allocation as all the other districts. Again, trying to put multiple questions that kind of have the same theme and tone together. Um, will any of these bus lines connect to the HE Homes Marta rail Marta line and the question was asked what would keep the transportation committee from re-adding the direct connectivity to the Marta rail system I don't believe that was answered our system would connect indirectly with Marta by linking with Cobb, the Cobb community system. Now, as far as the transportation, transportation committee uh, re-implementing the direct line to, to HE Homes, uh, it, it, at this time it appears that that wouldn't be necessary or, or proper if we're able to connect with, with uh, Cobb Link because they, they would be doing the, that same thing for us. And if we were running HE homes and they were we would be running parallel which would be a duplication of services and we certainly don't want that Carroll County has 500 and 504 square miles with a population of a hundred and ten thousand five hundred and twenty seven Douglas County has 201 square miles with a population of 132,403. Carroll has 17% less population than Douglas, yet Carroll has 2.5 times the square mileage of Douglas. Carroll has a very economical dial-a-ride system. Why can't Douglas County do a dial-a-ride system?
The dialeride is was supposed to be step two in the original uh, proposal, and in this uh, new proposal is uh, step two. I think because of the uh, step, the new proposal being such a larger uh, program, I think it will delay the dial a ride. Uh, th now that's my personal opinion. Um, the dial a ride system would be ideal um, because it would address the disability, uh, people with disabilities and with uh, uh, the seniors. Pick them up at the door, drop them at the door. Um, I would love to see it implemented even if this passes, I would push and push and push that we get the dollar ride. But I do think it's going to be delayed because it's a bigger program that they've got to find the stops and all this other stuff. A um, while ago when we were talking about connectivity to Cobb Link, I think one of these uh, routes actually goes into Cobb County. To, or it goes, it picks up a people from apartments that's in Cobb County? I, I had asked him that before, but I don't know that we got an answer. <laughs> well, in, o in order to make the connection with Cobb Link, we may have to, to squeeze over into a portion of Cobb County. And as uh, the apartments that uh, Commissioner Guider is, is talking about, it's on one of the roads that we have to go up to get to our Blair, North Blair's Bridge Park and Ride Lot, which is in Douglas County. So it, it being public transportation, we could pick people up uh, at that, that apartment complex, but this, this revised um, Lithia Springs area route, it's, it's certainly not intended to run up and down the roads of Cobb County, but we do have to go uh, through a small stretch of Cobb County to make that link with the Cobb system. Trying to keep them in order. Seniors and disabled service is okay. Why are we concerned so much with connecting our community with other municipalities when we should be concentrating on our community alone? Able-bodied folks can ride a bicycle. I did, 10 miles each way when I had to. Well, the hills around here are not good for riding bicycles, I can tell you. <laughs> and the curves, yeah. Uh, we don't have bike lanes <laughs> either. Um, I'm not necessarily for connecting to other uh, uh, bus systems um, until we get our intra-county bus system up and going. Is that question up here? <laughs> yes. Right here. Oh. Well, uh, okay. I, I mis mis misinterpreted what I what I, what I didn't hear. Um, I think that, that the active word there is, is community you used in that sense. You know, as a community, we financially support taxpayers, support a lot of things we don't use. Uh, parks, for one. Probably a lot of people here don't go to, don't go, go to the parks, but we pay for it. And uh, libraries, probably a good number of people here don't go to libraries, but we you know, we support it as, as a community. And so I think uh, at the end of the day, transportation solutions are borne by the community for the benefit of all, although individuals may not benefit. Uh, so that's how, that's how I would answer that 
we, we, we pay for a lot of things we don't use in Douglas County, but it's for the, it's for the community at large. How many seniors are those with or those with disabilities are on any planning boards to discuss what type of plan we're going to use? These were advertised originally for seniors and disabled. I don't know of any, and that is a good suggestion uh, that we should have people with disabilities on some of these uh, committees um, or, or have input into some of the decisions made on their behalf. While they're running through them. Uh, one of the questions here is how many personal vehicles are expected to be replaced by the buses? And was this study conducted, was there a study conducted to determine how many? And was there a determination made? I don't have any specific numbers on that. I will say that the, the grant that we're trying to get approved now is called Congestion Mitigation in Air Quality. And this particular grant uh, that we're applying for, along with 100 others in the Atlanta Regional, they go through a considerable vetting process and a, a grading and scaling process. And they must have a, an air quality positive impact uh, before they they will be awarded. So while I don't have the, the complete numbers, we wouldn't be getting the grant if it didn't have a positive impact on air quality. I will, I will add to that that uh, theoretically the capacity of the buses are 12 uh, passengers and two handicapped uh, passengers. So theoretically, you could have as many as 12 additional cars taken off the road if the buses run full. Uh, if not, it'll be some fraction of that. I did contact my BOC chairman and district commissioner with no response. What else can I, a citizen do? Number one, keep trying. Uh, document it. Uh, in the past, before I was commissioner, I would make an appointment. There's no, nothing like face to face, and I know sometimes that's not practical. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, you can ask the commissioner or the chairman to meet with you. I would certainly do that. And uh, we've got several up here about the dial ride. Um, it seems like there's a lot of interest, and I'm glad to hear that. Would it be possible to fund a dial ride system for two to three years without a grant? Uh, it would probably take a, at least four to six buses, and for $35,000 it is costing um, uh, Carroll County, I would say yes. We've already got four buses, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Why are there alternative forms of transportation that could better satisfy all citizen needs not being considered, such as dollar ride? I think we've already answered that. How much uh, money will the dollar ride charge an individual rider? 
uh, over all I can tell you about that is over in Carroll County, it's three dollars for one way and six for round trip. And how can we, the citizens, sue to prevent the board of commissioners? I better not answer that one. <laughs> I may have to <laughs> be be listed in that lawsuit. <laughs> um, I can't read the writing. I'm sorry. Ode to reason, the whole thing. I think this is about a lawsuit, so I'm not going to answer that one. Okay. Thank you. Let me touch on on uh, one of the questions that you had, and uh, I, I can't I can't re I can't rephrase it, but uh, al alternatives uh, in transportation and. Uh, some of you or most of you know that I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of trails. And uh, I'm, trails certainly are, are recreational and they're rehabilitative and they're educational, uh, but they're also economic development tools. And there are a lot of places where you have the density where people don't have to get into a vehicle to go to the grocery store or go to a dentist appointment. They can actually ride a tricycle or, or a bicycle. Our um, Livable Centers Initiative, which goes down Fairburn Road all the way to the river, uh, includes provisions that when the de developers build something, it could be mixed use. It, you know, I, I don't know what the future holds, but you know, it could be uh, uh, big box stores. It could be it could be apartments and condos and houses and and everything, restaurants, everything in between. The ability to, to access those amenities without getting into a car is is essential. And uh, we have that already have that in place with our development code. This particular question is: Do you really expect anyone that owns a car to give it up to ride the bus? Well, my wife did for 12 years. Uh, she worked at George Pacific downtown, drove the car to the our transportation center, and then rode the bus for, as I said for 12 years uh, down to her work. Uh, so yes, I do expect some people to give up the car. It, it, it can be a money-saving thing. Uh, but what about people who don't have cars? This one was uh, actually asking, um, why didn't we do research? There was a transportation study done in 2015. Um, what other interest? In infrastructure costs such as bus stops management and blah 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 and how is it going to be paid that's going to be uh, some of that's going to be paid out of the grant some of it cannot be paid out of the grant and could you tell which ones would cannot be funded through a grant well so certainly infrastructure type things like passenger shelters benches trash receptacles, all of that we'll be able to uh, pay for with grants. Now, as far as uh, maintaining those areas, making sure the trash is picked up and things like that, uh, staff would be responsible for, for that. And that would have, you'd have to consider that part of the cost of, of additional personnel for the bus service. And that would be general fund, yes, general fund. Yes, and um, how can money be absorbed by the county for maintenance by not raising our taxes? <laughs> um, I don't want to add $2 million to the budget. The budget steers the tax rate. Uh, the digest, when it grows, they, and uh, if your budget grows with it, um, then you, you're going to have higher taxes. Uh, uh, if uh, the digest doesn't grow, you're going to have a whole lot of higher taxes. But uh, the budget drives the tax rate. Lower, quit your spending, slow the spending down, and you won't have to raise taxes. Okay, so is it correct that the cost when the CMAC grant runs out will have to be picked up by the taxpayers? Are you going to volunteer this one? <laughs> you come up here and get it. 
Uh, certainly, and I'm going to ask Gary to elaborate about, about the funding, funding mechanism process, but uh, certainly the, the potential is for the, the county taxpayers to uh, fund the bus system after the grant runs out on the assumption that we don't have some sort of re renewal, uh, some type of uh, federal and state grant, which is a, a good possibility, but absolutely no guarantee in that regard. But it'll, it'll end up uh, in the... Uh, uh, General Fund. Anything you would add, Gary? God, you didn't know I'd do so well. Can the county return the funds if we accept the grants? No. No. <laughs> Once you accept it, it's, it's a done deal. And then uh, we've got a question about option A. That's this Lithia Springs route. Option A, why offer in increased service at off-peak frequency times? I don't understand why there's an option A and an option B, because one just turns down Skyview Drive, and the other one goes to Highway 78 and turns in the same direction, ending at Thornton Road either way. Uh, it seems like there's less residential property on the Highway 78 route, um, than it would be on the Skyview Drive. But I didn't understand why we even have an option. Um, I just don't understand it. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to ask Gary to cover this because it talks about uh, OEM, and I'm not sure the, the numbers are accurate. The original bus plan was a... Oh, I'll get on the microphone. Better. Okay. Everybody hear me? Okay. Sorry about that. The original bus plan was approved at a cost of 100000 to 500000 O and M cost annually. What is the cost of O and M for the current four route plan? Where will the additional cost come from in the general fund budget? Gary, would you go over the, the, the funding mechanism? And I, and I have another question here. It's not actually kind of the thing we're, we were looking for. Could we have a show of hands uh, who are opposed to the bus system? A show of hands for people who are opposed to the bus system. Okay, nearly about everybody. Okay, thank you. To the to the OEM. I don't want to put people on the spot. Okay, the 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 budget that we were proposing for the first uh, year of op operation of the system um, amounts to two million twenty one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Um, of that amount. About $1.6 million will come uh, from the, the federal grant. Um, so the, what's left of that amount, uh, passenger fares would cover part of that. Uh, the industry standard is that your passenger fares typically cover about 25% of your operating costs. We hope we reach that mark. We don't know if we will or not. But, but basically, it's... Uh, a, a 1.6 million federal share with a $400,000 local share uh, per operating year. A statement was made at the Board of Commissioners meeting that everybody already knew what they were voting for or how they were going to vote on this. So what was the purpose of this meeting? To educate the public. Um, there, this one is about the increased uh, assessment values. The, uh, you know, they, they just sent their notices out. Um, the Board of Assessors works under a state law. The Board of Commissioners n cannot get it, interfere with what they do. Um, so when they go up on assessment notices, we learn that when we get the digest from them. And 
hopefully when the assessments go up, the millage rate will be rolled back. However, that does not work 100% to make a wash. A lot of times people's taxes still go up even though the millage rate goes up. I mean, it's roll, roll back. Um, how can we start over with a common sense plan? I don't know. Uh, like I say, till the fat lady sings, you know, contact your um, uh, commissioners. But uh, the question a while ago was how many, who in here opposes the um, bus system, but they didn't specify which bus system. I'm going to ask for two different votes. Who in here would be okay with the original uh, plan two route system? Okay. Who would be, uh, who is for this new system, the four route system? Okay. Um, so, from what I saw, it appeared that most people in the room was okay with the, the original routes. Uh, I know we didn't have anybody come up and talk at any of the board meetings, but I will say that uh, we dropped the ball in communicating with the city. My apologies to y'all. We thought somebody else was doing it. It's one of those situations. But city council should have been able to give a vote of approval or, or non-approval because most of the routes are inside the city. So it just, some, some things were not done properly. Okay. They saw me sitting there, they loading me up. This question's for, uh, I think I probably just need to go to uh, Gary and see if he has any information. What will be the forecast of cost based on Cobb buses? Does that go to the 25% uh, recovery ridership? And Their system is so different from ours, it'd really be hard to compare us us with them, but again, I said the industry, industry standard for fair collection is around 25%. Mm -hmm. That's across the board with everybody. Okay. Uh, why do you, anyone, think we need to go out of Douglas County for our services? Uh, I'm talking. I'm, I'm going to interpret that to mean to go out of the county with with bus services. If you'll if you'll oblige me, um, I think we all know that uh, anywhere from uh, 70 to 78 percent of Douglas County people that work uh, work outside the county, and so that's where the buses eventually need to go in terms of a regional system uh, to uh, connect into the. ATL, the, the uh, Atlanta Transit Link. Uh, it's just because so many people work outside of Douglas County. And will they give up their cars? I mean, who knows? Uh, is the objection to public transit or to going about it in a disorganized, or to going about it in a disorganized, erratic, and amateurish way? That is, building planned around on the ability to get free buses rather than a well-designed plan that first determines specific transit needs, then reviews feas feasible means of provide, I guess, providing, providing them. Uh, fair criticism. We're getting to the bottom. <laughs> uh, do we need only 14 or 16 type buses? I guess I mean passenger buses, such as churches use. Uh, it is 15 passenger, isn't it? And it's room for two wheelchairs, wheelchairs yes. Uh, how will the bus system affect our property values or, or for homeowners? I don't know. I don't. Um, 
I don't know if it's handled properly, I, it shouldn't affect it. Um, I know that the federal government um, pays for some of this, but what, where is it coming out of the, uh, from the county? It'd be coming out of the general fund. The general fund is where your tax money goes into. <laughs> This, uh, this seems to be kind of a statement, but I'll, I'll respond to it uh, like, it's a, like it's a question. I have been in many county meetings with Economic Development Board, community supervision, and various nonprofits and community organizations that work with citizens who are job qualified and able bodied yet lack transportation. Many companies locating here expect a really, a work, uh, work workforce, a ready workforce. Uh, buses will help provide this. And it says, uh, and I'm sorry, I can't read the rest of it, but uh, I, I get the gist of it. Uh, I can tell you that um, transportation and, and, and public transportation is a, a draw for economic development and for companies wishing to locate in an area. Because frequently they have jobs uh, for people who are, uh, don't have transportation or don't have um, uh, adequate transportation, whatever, whatever this be. So, so companies do look for transportation. That's, that's uh, every, every study that you read finds that. Now, is this, is this particular transportation right fit for Douglas County? You know, that, that remains to be seen. Uh, but the reality is uh, I have seen people walking to work up Chapel Hill Road just about every time I drive up Chapel Hill Road. There's somebody walking in the road because, dare I say, we don't have sidewalks. Uh, another pet peeve of mine. So, again, it goes to the, to the sense of community of providing for people that uh, uh, want to work and need to work and don't have a way to get to work. And there are some of those among us uh, right now. Uh, another question, would these elderly people be given permanent seats? Uh, I doubt it. I think it's going to be first come, first serve. <laughs> but uh, I will say, if it's if it's a designated, do the buses have actually designated senior seating? Okay. Uh, I think we probably need to look at that if that happens. Reserved for seniors, uh, and it's open seat if there's not any seniors on board. Uh, I worry about others, particularly young people, taking seats that elderly and disabled people depend on. Uh, these buses are very small. Well, uh, I've heard so much feedback that the buses are, are too big, but, uh, you know, 60, 40, 60 passenger buses. But uh, these are vans. They are small. And that's basically what uh, Commissioner Guider and I have, to have talked about is, is about starting small. Um, we, think that, uh, we think the two-route system with the vans is, is the way to go if we were to, if we were to do anything. Um, but um, we'll have to find out next week how the full commission votes. Last one, we, and we're gonna make it. <laughs> um, we promised to get you out here uh, by eight o'clock. Um, this really equates the uh, property downfall, you know, the recession that we went through with our property values, losing values, because peop many pi people bought houses they couldn't afford, and they're saying, we're buying a bus system we can't afford. So, uh, I can only say that's my argument. Uh, I just don't think we should jump into the deep water till we know we can swim. <laughs> and so uh, I, I am, I've advocated all along, I was okay with the um, uh, two routes. However, we did not in incorporate the, the city in, in their uh, feedback. Uh, we didn't do a lot of things right on it, but we can't undo what we already done, but I w would uh, favor a two route system if the public wants it, if it's directed. And I'm concerned about the buses too, that the commuters or people going to the mall that are not the seniors, the seniors are gonna be pushed out of the way. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to ride if they can't get to the bus stops. 
So that's a, that's a concern. But um, uh, I hope this has helped clear the air on some of the things that you hear, you see on Facebook, and this, that, and the other. I hope it's helped to answer your questions. My main concern was trying to bring this community back together. This is this has uh, created a chasm between our county, people that's far the buses and, and not far, but as you saw a while ago, some of them's okay with a smaller system that will accommodate all the elderly and all the disabled. We're not, I, you know, I voted for to uh, implement the, the first resolution to start the ball rolling on this because we were gonna start out small, we were gonna educate the people and see, get the feedback. We were gonna follow the uh, transportation study. But what I, whatever we do, there's gonna be a pro or a con vote coming down the pipeline. But don't let Douglas County be the loser in this. Do not let this separate our county we need to work together. We need to remember we're neighbors. We're all neighbors. And that we need to come together on other issues, this issue, uh, whatever. But let's don't let this anger us to the point that we, we, we just um, start uh, down the wrong path. We need to uh, respect other people and um, just take it to the Lord <laughs> because I, I truly believe that we need to get on our knees and, and pray for uh, love and trust and respect to come back to this county. Thank you.